I wasn't going to go live today, but then the market started to tank. We were at 71,000. And then I looked at the market and everything was red and Bitcoin was down at exactly 68,800. And so I thought I'd come on because I think I know what's causing this dump. And I want you guys to know exactly what is causing this dump. I want, I want you guys to also know how low it's going to go. And then I also want to remind you of something. I want to remind you that if you FOMO on a green day, you won't have enough ammo to FOMO on a red day. You must FOMO on the red day. And today is the red day. So today we're going to FOMO and I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to FOMO into. Don't be like the amateurs, like the amateurs that asked me why I wasn't buying yesterday because I said it was a green day. We buy in the red days. And today I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to buy. I'm also going to show you exactly why the market is going down. So let's get the show on the road right here from Paris. I wasn't going to do it, but here I am. So let's go. see a lot of people in the comments complaining that I was late and why was I late? I think you should be thanking me for actually doing a show when I'm here in Paris for P Paris Blockchain Week. Here I am sitting in my hotel room bringing you a crypto show and I wasn't going to bring you a show but you know what? I have to on a day like this, on a day where the markets look like this, I have to bring you guys a show because I have to show you guys exactly what's going on. It's pretty obvious what's going on and that's what we're going to be discussing today. Pretty obvious what, what, what's happening out there. So listen, if you appreciate me being here in Paris after a 25 hour flight and bringing you crypto love and crypto wisdom, I'll ask you for only two things in return. Number one, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and I'm going to show you a reason why you need to subscribe and destroy. <clears throat> and I mean obliterate that like button in appreciation for me after a 25 hour flight coming here. And the first thing that, that I do before I go to the conference, bringing you the show today. So let's get the show on the road because I don't have much time, but I do wanna give you the crypto love and I do wanna give you the crypto wisdom. We are at 69,000. Uh, we were doing very, very well on the Bitcoin price. We were at 72,800. We all thought we were gonna, we were gonna break this 73,000 level. And then we started to dump all the way down to 69,000. We started this dump because Grayscale made a big uh, um, transfer into Coinbase, which is usually an indicator that Grayscale are going to be selling more tokens into the market. Now, this wasn't one of their ordinary daily small transfers into Coinbase. This is one of the big ones. This is a 6,200 Bitcoin, almost half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin flowing out of GBTC. And I said to you guys yesterday, the way I see this GBTC dump is actually very different from how everybody else sees it. The more they can flow out, the quicker, the better for us. Let's get this GBTC puncture out the way. Let's get all the air out of the tire. And then let's move on with the bull market, not having to worry about GBTC. And I said to you that the one part where I would feel very comfortable around this GBTC thing is when the Bit iBit or the BlackRock Trust has more uh, uh, Bitcoin than the GBTC trust. So when the IBIT overtakes the GBTC trust in terms of who's holding more Bitcoin, that is going for me to be the stuff or the, the moment where I realize that this GBTC thing becomes a nothing burger. And the truth is, if you look at it, it looks like it's going to happen even before the halving. Okay, so that is where we are today. But regardless, regardless of, of, of when that happens, and it will happen before the halving, I think the one thing that we need to understand is that today the market is red, 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 red. Um, it's not only our market, just by the way, it's not only the crypto market because of GBTC. Um, it's also the NASDAQ. So if you look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ also fell like 60 points ahead of this, the CPI reading. Um, so you can see we had a little bit of a red candle. It's recovering a little bit. And that's the, you can call it the pre-CPI jitters. So the market's starting to get jittery around uh, the CPI reading, which is tomorrow. Now, remember what Powell said was, Powell said that if inflation comes down or if they can be convinced that inflation is going to come down, then they will start decreasing rates. And so the whole market has basically been betting that Powell will start decreasing rates at some time this year. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. If you look at the CPI expectations for tomorrow, so this is the CPI reading which is happening tomorrow, the expectations are 3.4%. And the previous CPI reading was 3.2%, which came in just above target. And so now what the market is starting to price in, and when I say the market, when I look at all the banks in the market, they're all starting to price in a 3.4% CPI, which means that actually, according to the Fed's readings, 
CPI is not actually is not actually coming down. And if CPI is not coming down, then Powell can't put his hand on his heart and say, okay, it's time for me to reduce rates. And so what's happening at the moment is the market is starting to factor in less and less rate cuts this year. We were on three, and now we're talking about two rate cuts. And I guess what's going to happen, we have to read what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow, uh, we have to wait and see what's happening. The one good thing that I can say to you, the one good thing, if you're looking for like a, a ray of sunshine in, in gloomy Paris, actually, now it's not so gloomy. Now the clouds are out. Crazy weather in Paris. When I arrived here, raining, I look out the window, now clear blue skies. I don't know how the French do it. I don't know how the French do it. Anyway, one ray of light that I can give you is that whatever direction Bitcoin has been heading before the CPI reading, it headed the other way after the CPI reading. So this is just the last four CPI readings. So January, February, and March, the last three. And you can see that if Bitcoin was going up on the way into CPI, it went down after CPI. So if you're looking for a ray of hope, and I, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't like bet the bottom dollar on, on this bit of alpha, but I mean, if you're looking for patterns, this is the pattern. The real reason, so that's, that's why the markets went down. So one is you had grayscale selling. The next thing is you had the, the pre-inflation market jitters or whatever you want to call it. That is what, uh, what everyone will tell you if you ask them why the market actually went down. But you want to know why the market actually went down? Let me tell you why the market actually went down. It's so simple. It's because when we get a weekend pump, we leave a CME gap. And a CME gap is always closed. 95% of the time, the CME gaps are closed. And I was warning after the weekend, I said, if we, we pumped like crazy on the weekend, we created a crazy CME gap. The CME gap closes between 68,000 and 68,800. Where's Bitcoin now? Oh, what a coincidence. Did we get to 68,570? Oh, 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 oh. Wow, what a coincidence. It's almost like the charts told us what's going to happen before it actually happened. So look, is the CPI gap closed? Not exactly. The CPI, the CPI gap is not exactly closed. Let's hope it goes down, touches at 68,100 or whatever it is. Then the CPI gap is closed. Then Bitcoin can actually start taking its direction. So that is the main reason why it went down. Forget about what everybody else tells you. It's because of the CPI gap, because of the, 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 the CME gap. There was a CME gap which formed on the weekend because we rocketed up on the weekend. When the CME opened, after it was closed for the whole weekend, it the, the opening left a gap. And now we have to fill that gap because we do 95% of the time. And so now it, it's decision time for Bitcoin. Once it tags at 68,100 or whatever it's going to tag, then we get into real decision time for Bitcoin. And I want to talk about real decision time for Bitcoin. But before I want to do that, I said to you guys that Powell is saying that he will reduce, infl he will reduce interest rates when, when inflation reduces. And the market is saying, the market is saying that, the, that the forecast inflation is 3.4%. But if I look at our friends, true inflation, okay, now you can see that they're saying that the actual inflation this year is actually 1.82%. Okay, now I said, you, you may have heard me say the word our friends, a, a true inflation. You'll remember that true inflation is a company that what they do is they do readings of true CPI in the United States, unbiased true CPI in the United States. Now, let me ask you a question because you guys are smart in the chat. Who do you trust more? Do you trust the inflation reading that is taken by the United States government? Or do you trust the inflation reading that someone says, Tony Begg says that it's been down to 68,800. So we're almost, that CME gap is almost closed. When that CME ga gap is closed, then maybe we go to Valhalla. Maybe we go to Valhalla. So who do you trust more? Do you trust the government with a 3.4% forecast? Or do you trust true inflation that actually goes out into the stores? They should call these guys not true inflation, truthflation. Now, I mentioned to you guys that these guys were our friends, right? They are friends. And because they are our friends, because Truflation are good friends of the channel, what Truflation decided to do was to give us an allocation of Truflation tokens into the banter bags. So you can see that there's an, another allocation of Truflation in the banter bags. So now we have Truflation, Vela, Orange DX. By the way, Vela and Orange DX, there's going to be a massive Bitcoin protocol. So Vela, Orange DX, Trex20. Then you've got Tap Protocol, Beeple, Peckland, Saga. These banter bags are getting huge. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? 
they gave us a thousand dollars of trueflation to go into the banter bags. That trueflation, which launched today, by the way, is up 600%. 600%. So trueflation came to the party. We trust them. They are our friends. And they gave us a thousand dollars into the banter bags. Now, if you want the banter bags, number one, you got to be subscribed to banter. Number two, you got to be subscribed to banter plus. Number three, you got to have an exchange account link on the day when you win the banter bags. Now, it's not unusual for me to do crazy things and just pick people from the chat and just award them the banter bags. Like, it's not unusual. I, like, I could go into the chat right now and I could like pick a name. Like, I could say Daniel or Feature or Abbott or Adrian. I could. And I, and I might actually even do it before the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe to Banter. Make sure you subscribe to Banter Plus. Make sure you have an exchange link that we can actually pay you. Anyway, let's carry on. As I was saying, now the CME gap is going to be closed. Now, the, now Bitcoin has to make a decision. What is the decision? Well, let's look at two sides of the coin, okay? We mustn't only be biased and look at one side of the coin. Let's look at two sides of the coin. What are the two sides of the coin? The first thing is if you look at the first quarter on Bitcoin and you look at the fundamental on-chain metrics, Bitcoin's up 69%. The ETF flows, I mean, we could never, ever, ever have imagined the ETF flows to be as high as these ETF flows are going to be. The total value locked on the different layers up 128%. The minor revenue up 34%. From an on-chain point of view, there's no one selling Bitcoin anymore. There's just no sellers. Left. There's just not selling. Guys, th these are run bags under the eyes. Those are the banter bags. You want the banter bags. Uh, even though people are talking about this fractal um, where, where we spoke about yesterday, this explosion fractal, so to speak, right? This fractal that shows us that we're about to explode. Even though finally, 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 people have woken up 10 days before the halving and they've said the halving is here. They're starting to understand the impact of the halving. And as Rec Capital says, he says, do you realize whatever downside Bitcoin experiences before the halving, if any, will be the last bargain buying opportunity in 2024 pre-halving period ever. Okay, that's what he says. But then he corrects it and he says, there are only two bargain buying opportunities left for Bitcoin before the price takes out into price discovery. There's the pre-halving retrace, which is kind of where we are now. And then there's the reaccumulation phase in red, which happens just after the halving. You might get like a spike and then you might actually go down. And I'll show you in a second that, that he's not the only one who thinks this. Then you've got uh, uh, Julian Moreno. Julian Moreno says, Bitcoin demand has become more important than supply. Bitcoin demand is growing at an unprecedented rate because of the ETFs. And now we're getting Chinese ETFs, that are Chinese suppliers that have filed for ETFs in Hong Kong. That's pretty much what's going on right now. People are starting to realize what I said yesterday. And I don't know if you remember what I said yesterday. I said, look, the first thing is the issuance of Bitcoin at the halving halves. That's and because the issuing halves in the halving, so as Willie Wu says, the Bitcoin's annual supply drops from 1.7 to 0.85, and that makes Bitcoin officially, officially more scarce than gold, okay? Uh, USD inflation is, a, a, okay, so now, now with this in mind, with this in mind, remember we spoke about, I said to you, I said to you that there's multiple Chinese institutions that want to launch uh, ETFs that have applied to launch ETFs in Hong Kong. And you've got Morgan Stanley and UBS fighting to try and be the first one to push uh, uh, it to, to the clients. Now, I want to show you something here. Yesterday, I said to you that the halving is actually the beginning of an era. It's not the end of an era. Well, it's the end of an old era, but it, it is actually the beginning of a new era. Because the amount of Bitcoin that is released into the market halves, the miners theoretically for a period of time, not on one day, but for a period of time, actually have to make a lot more money to cover their expenses, including electricity and, and, and whatever other expenses are. And so I said to you that what I would do is I'd go and do an analysis for you guys and show you what the next four years could potentially look like. And that's what exactly what I did. So not actually me, it was actually my researchers while I was on the plane. What I told the researchers to do was I told them to go to the starting point of the last halving. And you can see that the starting point was when Bitcoin was trading at $8,579, or it was on the 5th of the 11th, or the 11th of the 5th, I'm not sure which dates they used. I think it's the 5th of the 11th, 2020. That was when the last halving was. And the price of Bitcoin at the last halving was $8,579. Now, let's say that we'll take today as the price for the next halving, which is $70,000. What you can see is that 
the price multiple between the one halving and the other halving was 8.16. Now, let's go to 2016. 2016, the same thing happened. The starting point was 651. The end point was 8,579, which is where we started the following halving, right? And so the multiple was 13.16. That's not the thing that I explained to you yesterday. What I explained to you yesterday was that the price, once the, the number of Bitcoin that are released by the algorithm are halved, the price has to maintain elevated for long periods of time so that miners can actually cover their costs. It's not a one day thing. It's a period of time. So once that clock ticks, which is happening in exactly 10 days, once that, that, clock, that clock clicks in 10 days and we go into the halving, we then have to have an increased price of Bitcoin for a long period of time. Okay, so that's what I wanted to analyze. I wanted to say, well, you know, if, if we take a long period of time, let's say the long period of time is four years, what can we expect the average price to be in four years? And this is where I found the magic. You can see that if you take the starting point at the halving, and then you take the closing date, and you can see we've done it for every single day since the halving, and you take the average of the, of the halving, the average is 32,000. And so the average is 3.8 times the, the price on the halving day in the next four years. Okay, now let's go see what happened in 2016. So in 2016, the average was 5,764. And if you take the, that and divide it by the opening price, you get an eight multiple. And so what you can see is that we are now entering an era where Bitcoin will be somewhere between three times and eight times the price on average that it is today for the next four years. That is the beauty of the halving. It's not about a one day thing. It is about taking the prices from all of this, taking all the prices for the, for the next last four years and extrapolating it and saying, well, where will it be? Where will it be in the next four years? And you can see that on average, we're talking about an 8x multiple in 2016 and a 3x multiple in 20, uh, in, in 2020, a 3.8, 4x multiple. But I want to show you something else. This is not top to bottom because by the time the, the halving happened here, Bitcoin had already been to 20,000 and come all the way down and come all the way down. So, sorry, let me just kill that. So, what you can see, what you can see is that for a period now, we are going into a period where Bitcoin for a long period of time has to be priced at least four times higher than it is today which means that if you just zoom out and say, look, I'm not worried about what's going to happen today or tomorrow, and I'm looking at the period of the next one year or two years, you can see that in the next one year or two years, the price of Bitcoin has to go up and has to go up a lot. Why? Because usually the top happens one year after the halving. So I want to just show you something here. So in, let's look at 2020. Let's look at 2020 because that's probably the easiest one. I'm not going to take you all the way down. In fact, maybe I can. So we go to, uh, hold on, let, let, let me try and move that again. Okay, so we go to the bottom of the this, of this spreadsheet. So I'm, I'm working with, uh, with monitors that are not, uh, there we go. Okay, so we go down to the halving here, 8,579. But you can see in the year after the halving, the price goes up and up and up and up and up and up and up until we get to 64,000 or something like that. And then it starts coming down. And that is why what I say to you is, the average price is going to be about three or four times higher, but the highest price could be as high as 10 times higher. That is the period that we're going into now. That's what's happened in, in the past two halvings. And I think this time is going to be the same. And so I think what you've got to look at is zoom out of the short term, whether we're going up or down today. And, you know, when it comes to the short term and, and focus on the long term, and, you know, when it comes to the short term, I want to show you something. When it comes to the short term, I did see two or three people that were actually commenting about maybe we're going to get some kind of pullback. So the first one was Benjamin Cowan. And I mean, look, naturally, Benjamin Cowan is a bear and he's much, much, much more right in a bear market than he is in a bull market. So I tend to focus a lot more on his content in a bear market because he's more right. He's just one of those people that generally have a very conservative outlook. Him, Gareth, or as you call him, Bereth, or whatever you call him, they have a more conservative outlook in, in, a, in, a, in a bull market than we do. 
And so in a bull market, they'll never do as well as us. In a bear market, they will always do better than us. But I want to do well in a bull market. I don't want to do, I don't care about doing well in a bear market. Just survive the bear market and do well in the bull market, right? So I prefer our mindset to the the other mindset, which is to always be conservative and to never you know like you know what it's like? It's like you go to a party, right? And you got that like one guy who just can't can't let go. Like, like, you know, for me, when the music's on, you should see me on that dance floor. I rip that dance floor apart, okay? I don't sit there on the side when the music's on and say, like, you know, maybe like I'm not really enjoying. No, when the when the, when the bull market's happening, I'm in full bull mode. When the bear market's happening, I'm not so good. I'll be honest. Like, I do my best to survive and I do my best to like get through it. But I'm actually I'm not. I'm not a good trader in a bear market because I'm naturally optimistic, which makes me very good in a bull market. Same as you guys. Same as you guys. So Ben Khan says, look, if the Bitcoin pattern repeats itself going into the spot ETF and going into the halving. Then what we'll do is we'll get like some kind of pump into this positive part and then we'll go down. Okay, so that's what his thesis is saying. Arthur Hayes actually has the same thesis, funny enough. So Arthur Hayes wrote one of his long sub stacks today. You don't have to read it because I've summarized it for you guys. Well, actually, chat GPT summarized it for me. No, I did. I actually did. I actually did read it. Okay. So, so yeah, someone says they have the same disorder as me. I have the same disorder. It's my mother used to call it, she used to say I've got optimism disease because I'm always optimistic. So no, no, let me know if you've also got optimistic disease because my mom used to say, you know what, you've got like the disease of being too optimistic all the time. And maybe that, that is a disease. In a bull market, it's an amazing disease to have. In a bear market, sure, not a great disease to have because you're always optimistic. You always think the market's going to turn. Anyway, let's go. Yeah, I see dancing man run. You should see me on the dance floor. You, you should see me. You should see me taking like a, a couple of shots of tequila or maybe a bumble. I don't know, whatever it is. You should see me on the dance floor. I ripped that. Paula's actually seen me on the dance floor. Paula, have you seen me on the dance floor or not? Have you actually seen me on the dance floor? Be honest. You have. She says, she sees, she says, she knows, she knows, she knows. Anyway, if someone says it's a winner's curse. So Arthur Hayes wrote a, a sub stack today. He calls it Heatwave. And in this sub stack, he basically says, look, he's not very bullish going into the halving. Now, the first reason why he's not very bullish going into the halving, he says, look, the halving, the narrative of the halving being positive for crypto is well entrenched. When most participants agree on a certain outcome, the opposite usually occurs. That's why I believe in, uh, uh, that's why I believe in Bitcoin and crypto prices in general will slump around the halving. So that's the first reason why he says it. The second reason why he says it is he says, look, there's two other things. The first thing is the US people have to make tax payments I think at the end of April, I think at the, you, if you're in the US, let me know when you have to make your tax payments. Also, let me know if you are going to make your tax payments and don't feel embarrassed if you're not. I'm not going to tell anyone. Just, I mean, we're all friends here. Let me know if you're going to do that. Anyway, um, he said, look, because of tax payments, the US uh, people, those that made money last year, because it was a bull market, we have to, we, they now have to pay tax, which means they're going to have to sell some of their assets to pay their tax. So think about it like this. If you've got Bitcoin and you made money last year and now you've got to pay tax, you don't have any, any liquid funds, where do you pay your tax from? Where do, you, where do you get money to pay your tax from? So the answer is that you're going to have to sell more assets, more Bitcoin, more stock market assets. Then he says, look, they're selling May and go away, which we, we all always try and argue is not going to happen. And then it always happens. Selling May and go away is like a thing that actually lands up always happening. Um, then the next thing that he says is he says, look, there is in the US, there is quantitative tightening. He says the Fed is going to start reducing its balance sheet and reducing its liquidity, right? And therefore, that's going to, to slowly, slowly, slowly reduce their balance sheet. And the problem with that reduction in the balance sheet is it's going to start causing the market to go down. So on the one hand, everything looks amazing. On the other hand, if you want the balanced view, which is what I'm trying to give you here, is that there are some people who are saying, look, there might be some choppy times ahead. What has Arthur, what has Arthur Hayes done uh, in response to this? Well, what he's done is he has sold his Mu shitcoin, not shitcoin, uh, meme coin. So he sold his Solana, sold his NMT, and placed the, the, the proceeds into Athena because you can get such high yields actually staking Athena. And we'll actually do a show showing you how you, if you want to make 30% yields per year, you can actually, you can actually use uh, Athena. Uh, let's see. Why is the management? Why is the management going crazy? Okay, no. Uh, let's see. Next. So that is what's going on here. But I think you know what I think it is. You know what I think it is. I think you guys forget. Okay. I think you guys think that 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 I'm an amateur. When I said yesterday to Sheldon, yesterday Sheldon was was mocking me, right? 
And he said to me yesterday, I don't know if you saw this. I said to him, Sheldino, I'm not buying yet. And then the market spiked up like a thousand dollars. And then what happened? Sheldino went and you know he had he had a bit of a punch at me. He said, uh, "Are you buying yet, sir? Coming to the party or staying home?" And I said, "Oh, you guys are such amateurs. I mean, did you not know this was going to happen? Like you knew that this the C, the CME gap was going to be closed. Don't tell me it's your first CME gap." But the thing is, on a red day like this, I think people forget that on the red days, those are the days where we actually want to be buying. Someone said, "If you FOMO'd yesterday on the green day, you won't have enough ammo to FOMO on the red day." If you want to FOMO, let's FOMO on the red day. Today is a red day. So today we should be FOMOing. We mustn't be amateurs. We mustn't be amateurs in FOMOing on a green day. Let that be a lesson to Sheldino for taking me on. Let that be, let that be a lesson. I don't understand why he always takes me on. The, the last time he took me on, he had a haircut. The time before that he took me on, he had to eat that smelly fish from Sweden. But he insists on taking me on. He insists. He insists on taking me on. I don't know why he does it. He's like a sucker for punishment. Anyway, um, this makes me very bullish that there's going to be an alt season very soon. And the reason why this makes me bullish is when people start saying, maybe there's not going to be an alt season, maybe alt season's never going to come, that's when I actually start getting bullish that we are actually about to get alt season. This time it's Peter Brandt, he says, look, if you look at Bitcoin dominance, just keeps going higher and higher, he's calling it up to maybe 66.3. Um, the way I see it, as long as Bitcoin is going up and we get uh, uh, the dominance going up, I don't mind because it's taking the old bags up with us. Uh, and so up until now, even though there's been no old season, I don't know about you guys, but I've made so much more money on my altcoin bags than I've made on Bitcoin that I don't really care whether it's an altcoin season or not because the, the altcoins that we've been, play, been playing have actually been, uh, have actually been flying. But you've got to remember, you've got to be careful about which altcoins you're playing because one thing that is true is that most altcoins don't, get don't outperform bitcoin in the second cycle and only very few of them do towards the end of the cycle that's why in the beginning of the cycle you actually want to be much more in bitcoin but towards the end of the cycle you want to be in altcoins i think someone said i fomoed yesterday you're an amateur bro rm you're an amateur absolute absolute amateur um red day equals sell day zweli 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 brother wouldn't you talk? You, you, you can't do that. So at the end of the cycle is when Bitcoin, when the altcoins will actually start outperforming Bitcoin. But also you got to remember one thing. There's been so many new launches on the market and these launches have been so big. You got Starknet at 26 billion. You got Arbitrum at 24 billion. You got Aptos at 22 billion. Celestia at 21 billion. Sui at 21 billion. This is billions of dollars. This is adding more market cap to crypto without the prices going down because we're just adding a lot of a lot of stuff here so i i'm in the avi feldman camp he says bitcoin structure is really nice right now market set to move but once again um but, sorry market set to move but uh will once again be a bitcoin led rally followed by alts if we breach all-time highs so the plan remains to be in bitcoin but when we get to all-time highs, to slowly start selling out and to move into the top-performing altcoins. Now, where are we now? We're touching the, the all-time high. Okay, maybe not exactly at this second, because the, right now we have a different job to do. The job is 68,100 to close the CME gap, okay? That's the job we have to do now. But after that, if we're going to attack the all-time high again, then what's going to happen is the altcoins are going to have to play catch-up to Bitcoin. So this is the Bitcoin fractal. Okay, you can see that's the Bitcoin fractal over there. The altcoin fractal is exactly the same, but it's about 77 days behind. We spoke about that. Okay, so, so it's, if someone says, like, I don't exactly the exact numbers because we did that the other, the other day. If my memory serves me correctly, we're just a couple of days behind. And if we are a couple of days behind, then look at what Bitcoin has just done. It's just taken out its all-time high. Logically, the altcoins, the same is going to happen with altcoins. So to me, like, I'm following the thesis that the altcoin cycle is just lagging the Bitcoin cycle. I'm following a, a thesis that our ability to select altcoins to outperform Bitcoin has been superb. And therefore, we have actually landed up outperforming Bitcoin. And in fact, I, I have to take my hat off to the researchers, the Irishmen, the whole team that, that's, that's helped me put this thesis together. But the one thing that, that, you that, that I have to show you is... Remember we did a show on, on narratives and I said to you guys, look, 
it's actually time to be taking money out of Solana. Like you want to be taking a little bit of money out of Solana and you want to be trading narratives. You want to be changing your altcoin narratives. And I want to just like, you know, that show was about, I guess it was about a month ago. Um, and I have to show you like what happened since we did that show a month ago. Um, but before I do guys, please just smash the like button because this is an unscheduled show. So I see that not all 10,000 of us here, only 9,000 or 8,500 people here. We need to get the other 2,000 people here. And when you smash the like button, you tell YouTube that th this is fun and that Rand got off a plane and instead of going to a conference, he did a show for us. Like That's what you tell YouTube by just smashing the like button. So please do that. Um, also, I've got some big news for you about Gumby, which we'll talk about in a sec. But anyway, we spoke about narratives. And when we spoke about those narratives, I said to look, it's not Solana season anymore. Solana season was the beginning of the year. It's not really Cosmos season. Um, what it is now is you have to look at adoption season. And I said to you, I don't know if you remember, but I said to you, look, my narratives are, and if you, know, if you don't believe me, just go back to, to the old show. But I said to you, look, there's a couple of narratives for me. The first narrative is Ton. That was my number one narrative. You remember that? I said to you guys, Ton, number one narrative. Here it is. Then I said to you, Base, Coinbase, Move, Real World Assets, Decentralized Social, and Phantom. Remember, this was like a month ago before any influencer was talking about Phantom, before anyone even knew what, well, they knew what Base was, but they certainly didn't believe there was going to be a Base season. Um, now let's look at, now let's quickly recap about how this played out. So Ton, okay, I mean, look, when I called Ton, Ton was at $3. So it was like somewhere here, so somewhere here, it was mid-March, it was $3, there we go, mid-March. And I said to you guys, look, Ton, 900 million users in the palm of their hand. And today, Ton is trading at $6.60, it doesn't even know what a dip is. Now, you look at this whole market going down. The one, the two that are defying the odds of the market, Ton, Phantom. The narratives that Rand told you to look at, Ton, Phantom, okay? It's our ability to call the narratives this year has been incredible. And what you can see now is that Ton is making all the right noises. So you look here, this is the, the fees they're charging. This is the market cap. Uh, these are very small. You can't really read them. But generally, if you look at every single metric of this, it's, it's running. I like to say that a good metric on a new chain is if you look at the meme coin on the chain. And I, I remember I called this and I said to you guys, resistance dog at two cents, resistance dog at two cents, resistance dog at two cents. Now resistance dog is at 40 cents. That would have been a 20x. If you just watched our meme show on, sun, on Sunday on Banter Plus, if you were just if you would just subscribe to Banter Plus and you just had the notifications on and you just put two grand into this thing over here, you would have made three times your money. You would have made three times your money. But now you can see resistance dog is actually starting to explode because there's no way that a narrative on a main, on a, that a meme coin on a, ma on a main chain can be valued at $42 million. And it was $17 million when we actually did it, right? No chance. And now Toncoin has surpassed Cardano in market cap. Uh, my condolences to all the Cardano people who are still holding on. They really are. They, they're still holding on. Uh, what, what are you holding on to, honestly? Like, honestly, like, are you, are you not over waiting for white papers and university reviews and stuff like that? Like, are, do you not know that, that other chains are moving forward with adoption while they're still doing white? And I know the Cardano community is going to meme this and hate me. I, I know, I know. And you're not going to be back here tomorrow. I know, I know. But we've got work to do. And our work is to bring you Alpha. And we gave you the Alpha. We said to you guys, buy Ton. Ton is, they have 900 million users in their, in their hands, in, in, in the palm of their hands, right? They are starting to make the, the they are starting to make all the right noises with those users. So the first thing is they're making you can see that they're starting to do something to do with AI. They're starting to do proof of humanity around AI. Number two, the Notcoin launch. Remember Notcoin tap 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 tap. That coin, the airdrop is launching on the you can see it here on the 20th of April on 420, which is by the way, the launch of Gummy Day. So uh, the launch of Gummy Day is getting very soon. I just, just quick announcement. We're going to go back to Tom, but just a quick announcement here. Number one, you have to stop farming. Well, we're going to take a snapshot of the banter bubbles points and the accounts on Blowfin. We're going to take the snapshot on the 19th or the 18th because we need time to put the list together for the airdrop on the 20th. So you have to farm like crazy. How do you farm? I've told you this before. And I'll tell you again. You collect these points. The more points you have, the more airdrop you're going to get. The second way to get points, you go to the description of the show. 
Okay, you go to the description of the show. You go to um, here. You go to our partner exchange for the airdrop, Blowfin. You sign up for Blowfin and you deposit money because there's a lot of you that signed up using bot accounts because there's no KYC. So anyone in the world can sign up. Yeah, Don't use a bot account because you have to deposit. Even if it's 50 bucks, leave 50 bucks on the exchange. If you don't, the problem is you're not going to get the airdrop even though you farm the points. Anyway, let's go back to Ton. So enough about Gummy. Even though you guys have done a phenomenal job, like 10,000 of you have signed up to, to blow for not enough, not enough. Um, and I know a lot of you are collecting points. Um, a friend of mine told me they went to a comedy show the other night. And in the comedy show, he saw some people with their phones on. And he like looked over to see why is your, you had a comedy show. Why is your phone light on? It was them farming banter bubbles points. They were like trying to get, and they didn't want to close the app, so they left the, the, the light on. So that's how serious people are. So you need to you need to get quite serious. Um, next thing. So the last thing where Ton has made a massive, massive, massive thing for me here is this: Telegram enables Ton payments for in-platform ad purchases. This for me was the thing that said, okay, they actually this is a this is a. Uh, uh, that what they've done here, what they've done here is they've actually created the currency that we thought that they were going to create with Ton. So Ton is going to be the current, a smart contract blockchain and a currency that is uh, that is going to be on 900 million phones. There's there's no one else that can get that adoption. Also, you look at the the uh, noises that they're making. All the exchanges partnering up with them. Mexi uh, strategic investment in Ton blockchain. Then uh, you got Andre from DWF. By the way, DWF are our market makers for Gummy. You know that these guys are amazingly famous for pumping tokens to the moon. Uh, they are. I, I'm not saying. I'm just saying that they are our market makers for Gummy. Can't tell you. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that uh, that that they're going to pump the coin because I'm not allowed to tell you that. Um, but they're making all the right noises. So I think we are very much in ton season. The next one is base season. We spoke about that. Move season, which is Sui. I think SUI season starts tomorrow. So the reason why I'm here, I'm here in Paris is to go to the SUI uh, conference. And you can see that the first thing I said is, I bet Phantom will be supporting SUI network soon. By soon, I mean sooner than anyone expects. Duh, they're going to announce it tomorrow at the conference. Don't say you didn't know about it. They also have a, a meme coin. It's called FUD USD. Uh, that's the SUI meme coin. Uh, it has a fully diluted market cap of $40 million. So FUD USD on SUI. Remember, every chain must have a, a, a winning meme coin. This meme coin was tweeted by lead Sui DeFi and Infra Deals Chief Degen. So this, uh, you could almost say this is like the first official uh, uh, um, uh, meme coin on Sui. So yeah, I think this is, a, this is a big one. This is a big one. All right, next one. Next one that we said is going to happen is Social Fire. Well, re real world assets. We spoke, about, we spoke about real world assets before BlackRock announced their real world asset fund. So that one you can say has absolutely exploded. One of our sponsors also, um, I want to show you, one of a, one of a Mantra. Mantra has absolutely, absolutely, I told you guys to buy Mantra. It's absolutely exploded. I think we spoke about it here around mid-March, 32 cents, now it's at 80 cents. This is real world asset infrastructure, uh, a real world infrastructure play. So we spoke about this real world asset thing way before the BlackRock thing was announced. The next narrative, and I'm not going to get into it today, is real, is, um, uh, decentralized social platforms. So there's the DGEN token, there's the friends, uh, friend tech points that you can farm. We'll do a whole show about it, but you can see that Anson, who's pretty tuned into narratives, he's now starting to talk about um, friends, circle, fantasy app, arena app, and decentralized social. So we, we will talk about that. The next narrative, phantom. I said to you, phantom, 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 phantom. And now we're starting to see signs, very small signs, but you've got to know exactly where to look that Phantom might actually start running. So first sign that I'm looking at, I'm looking at outflows out of wormhole. Where are they going? You can see that 3% of the flows are going into Phantom. Now you could say, look, that's a very, very, very short, uh, small amount of, of outflows. But let me show you why I'm getting excited. If I look at the last 30 days, only 0.41% went to Phantom. So we can see that the money is starting to flow slowly 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 into phantom usdc is now live on phantom they launching obviously sonic and under the says sonic upgrade still spring the summer target is something bigger so there might be something much bigger than, than sonic coming out there and they're getting a whole lot of of like really good investors and they're getting really active when it comes to meme coins so for me definitely phantom is is one of those that that i think will actually explode and that's why i call it i do want to talk to you about one other protocol uh one that we're invested in 
that I'm very, very, very excited about. I have spoken about it quite a long time, quite a long time before. Someone says one five 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 get gummy. Can someone tell me where to one five 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 get gummy in Paris? I wouldn't mind getting a, a gummy or half a gummy in Paris. Uh, so if anyone knows where you can one five 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 get gummy in Paris, I wouldn't mind getting some. Anyway, let's talk about one protocol that I'm very excited about. Also, friends of the channel, uh, it's a protocol which launched today. Uh, it was one of the first ones that went into our, remember a, a protocol called Saga Protocol. And I told you when they first gave us the allocation into the banter bags, and by the way, we invested in it. I, I said, guys, I'm very excited about Saga. And the reason why I was so excited about Saga was because of what Saga actually do. So what is it? Effectively, Saga is a, it plays into this whole being able to spin up a blockchain very, very quickly. That's what it plays into. And what they've got is they've got this model where anyone can launch what they call a chainlet. A chainlet is like a subchain, very, very, very quickly. And they can almost like, you could almost call it like pay as you go. So you pay as you use it. Now, the result is that a lot of these gaming applications, specifically gaming, because gaming is the niche where you kind of need your own blockchain with your own like qualities and stuff like that. A lot of these gaming blockchains are actually jumping onto Saga Protocol. So Binance users staked a record $13 billion to earn Saga Gaming Coin token rewards. Because I think what's going to happen here is you're going to start getting this, this airdrop narrative. Because remember, what is Saga? Saga is a blockchain that allows for subchains, which are called chainlets, to be launched very quickly. And I don't remember the numbers, but you pay like a little bit of money. Like it could be like $150 a month or $500 a month to basically have your own blockchain. And that's what these guys need. And so what I think is going to happen is with this whole saga coin, you make it into a new airdrop season where all these gaming protocols and all these other protocols that need to launch very quickly may actually create a whole game, uh, a whole airdrop narrative. So you got to keep, we'll keep our eyes out and you'll keep your eyes out for, for what saga coin actually going to do. So uh, let's just see if there's, um, if there's anything, any clues on their website. So yeah, airdrop, you see the, the, there's all the airdrops. They did actually do an airdrop as well. So if you haven't claimed your airdrop, go and talk, go and go and go and claim your airdrop. Um, what is Saga? The gaming network play to play to airdrop push and token launch gaming focused layer one blockchain. Saga has made a name for itself in recent months with an airdrop campaign. This led to $13.4 billion staked on Binance to earn Saga reward tokens. Once a token launches, which is going to happen. It's not the Saga phone, obviously. It's not the old Saga coin. This one is a layer one blockchain, um, which allows for these, these sub-chains, chainlets, as, as they call them. So they did give us an, an allocation for the banter bags. It is currently trading at about 7x what we wanted. Um, yeah, if you, go and claim your airdrop if you haven't already claimed your airdrop. But I think that this is one of the, this is one of the real ones that we backed a long time ago. And actually when we backed them, we told you guys, that's when we added them into the banter bags. We said, look, we're very excited about this project. This is one of those projects that I think is going to be in a long time. Uh, so keep your eyes on it. Now, would I ape in right now? I don't know. I never like to ape into tokens when they just launch. I like them to get that come down. And especially when this whole market's uh, taking a bit of a dump, I would wait for some kind of opportunity. But definitely, definitely put this one on your buy list because if you believe in this whole modular blockchain, if you believe in this whole thesis that people are going to want to spin up blockchains very, very quickly, this is something you've got to have in your portfolio. So yeah, keep an eye, keep an eye on Saga. Um, yeah, I think that's keep an eye. If you're not farming gummies, go and farm. I see that. Uh, let's look at it quickly. Let's just quickly see. I think today, like thirty thousand people have been farming. You need to farm because if you're not, you're not farming. Oh, 40,000 people yesterday. Forty-four thousand people actually started farming. So you you need to farm. You also need to get your Blowfin account and put money into the Blowfin account. Remember, this is the exchange that is going to list. Uh, uh, this is the exchange that's actually going to list the token when it actually launches. So you, you need to have money yet to A, sell your airdrop or buy. You better not be selling. You better not be selling. I tweeted something yesterday and I said, you know, like if you'd watch the Athena airdrop, Athena gave an airdrop to my ladies. Like what is the link between my ladies and, and, and Athena? Nothing. But there was a strong community there. Now, I think that Gummies is actually going to be a much stronger community because it's going to be the banter community. It's going to be a DJ community. And what we're going to encourage projects to do is to airdrop into our community. And the only way that we can prove that they're our community is that they're going to hold the Gummy token. So I think there's going to be lots of stuff happening with, with Gummy. Um, yeah, I will see you guys. Oops, some more people want to see it. As I talk about the banter bags, people here aping saying they want to join the banter bags. I, 
Ooh, ooh, yes, yes, yes. A lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people saying, yeah, a lot of people saying that they want to join the banter bags, want to join the banter bags. Okay, we'll, we'll get you into the banter bags. Guys, I've got to go to uh, the opening dinner of, the, not even the opening dinner, it's like a late dinner for the Paris Blockchain Week. So I'm going to leave you guys now. Love and leave you. Uh, if you haven't already liked, liked this, smash the like button. You're not subscribed, subscribe. If you're not already farming gummy, farm gummy. Otherwise, I will see you guys. I want to say tomorrow, but I can't promise you that I'm going to be here tomorrow. I will try. Until then, trade well, my friends.